This is Trey Tucker, a 5'9", 190-pound speed freak out of Akron, Ohio. On March 8, 2001, Tremoni Trey Tucker entered the world, destined to leave his mark on the silver and black. One of 12 siblings, Trey grew up in a bustling household with eight brothers and four sisters. His large family would prove to be the crucible that forged his unbreakable work ethic and competitive spirit. Having so many brothers and sisters meant Trey had to work hard to stand out, and stand out he did. At Cuyahoga Valley Christian Academy, Tucker's athletic prowess began to shine. On the football field, he was a force to be reckoned with, amassing 2,288 rushing yards, 1,854 receiving yards, and an impressive 68 total touchdowns. On the track, Tucker's speed was unmatched. He blazed his way to six Ohio High School Athletic Association state championships, winning back-to-back -back titles in long jump and the 100-meter dash in 2018 and 2019. He also claimed victories in the four by 200-meter relay and the 200-meter sprint. Tucker's talents caught the eye of the University of Cincinnati, where he committed to play football. As a Bearcat, Trey's versatility became his calling card. While his receiving stats were modest, his impact on special teams was undeniable. Tucker's lightning-fast returns electrified the crowd, finishing fifth all-time in kickoff return average and third in kickoff return yards in Cincinnati's record books. By his senior year, his leadership had earned him the honor of team captain. As the 2023 NFL Draft approached, Tucker's stock began to rise. His blistering 4.37 second 40-yard dash at Cincinnati's Pro Day turned heads. But it wasn't just his speed that impressed scouts. Tucker's strength was equally remarkable. Squatting 600 pounds and bench pressing 225 pounds for 16 reps, he proved he had the power to match his speed. The Las Vegas Raiders, under then head coach Josh McDaniels, saw Tucker's potential and made their move, selecting him in the third round with the 100th overall pick of the 2023 NFL Draft. In his rookie season, Tucker wasted no time making an impact. Playing in 16 games and starting one, he showcased his big play ability, averaging an impressive 17.4 yards per reception. He finished the year with 19 catches for 331 yards and two touchdowns, while also contributing in the rushing game with 10 carries for 77 yards. It was in week 15 against the Los Angeles Chargers that Tucker truly announced his arrival. In a breakout performance, he caught three passes for 59 yards and scored two touchdowns, giving Raiders fans a glimpse of the bright future ahead. Midway through Tucker's rookie season, a significant change occurred in the Raiders organization. Josh McDaniels was fired, and Antonio Pierce took over as head coach. Pierce immediately recognized Tucker's potential and made him a bigger part of the offense. I'm gonna point out, and obviously the obvious ones, but one guy really stood out this offseason, Trey Tucker. Different dude. Looks different, acts different, runs different, catches the ball different. Don't look at the size. Don't mention that. Watch him play. He's the biggest guy out there. He had a hell of an offseason. Came back right after the uh, offseason program, uh, the Super Bowl, and got in here and started working. Comes here every day. As Tucker entered his sophomore season in 2024, expectations were high. And he hasn't disappointed. Through the first few games, he's already made 16 receptions for 172 yards and scored a touchdown. But it's not just the numbers that tell the story. Tucker's blazing speed, combined with his significantly improved route running, has defenses on high alert. This newfound attention is creating opportunities for his teammates. Stars like Jacoby Myers and rookie sensation Brock Bowers are finding more open space as defenses scramble to account for Tucker's game-breaking ability. His growth as a receiver is transforming the Raiders' offense, making it more dynamic and unpredictable. Tucker's versatility remains a key asset for the Raiders. He's not just a receiver, but also contributes in the rushing game and on special teams. His ability to impact the game in multiple ways makes him an invaluable member of the team. From the bustling family home in Akron to the bright lights of Allegiant Stadium, Trey Tucker's journey is a testament to the power of determination, family support, and raw talent. As he continues to evolve under Coach Pierce's guidance, one thing is clear. Trey Tucker is not just a rising star, but a key piece in the Raiders' offensive puzzle. This is Trey Tucker. From Akron to the Raiders, a story of speed, strength, and the relentless pursuit of greatness. As defenses struggle to contain him, Tucker's future in the NFL looks brighter than ever. If you like this video, please support our work at the Raider D Podcast by subscribing and liking this video. 
And if you want to know the true reason Khalil Mack left the Raiders, check out this video here. Khalil Mack, one of the most dominant defensive ends in NFL history. Born February 22nd, 1991 in Fort Pierce, Florida. Raised by his parents and high school sweethearts Yolanda and Sandy Mack Sr. Khalil has two brothers, Sandy Jr. and Ladarius. His father introduced him to sports at the tender age of five years old. And although he initially favored baseball and basketball, he eventually found his calling in football. In high school, Mack transitioned from playing quarterback to becoming a linebacker, and his talent on the field eventually led him to a successful college football career at Buffalo. Mack's NFL career took off when the Oakland Raiders selected him fifth overall in the 2014 NFL Draft. He quickly became a cornerstone of the defense. His journey from Fort Pierce to the NFL has been nothing short of remarkable. Standing at six foot three, weighing in at 252 pounds, Max blend of speed, power, and unmatched technique was a nightmare come true for any offensive lineman. His Raider tenure was nothing short of spectacular. From 2014 to 2017, he amassed 40 and a half sacks, 185 tackles, Tackles, nine forced fumbles and three picks, including a pick six. The Mac attack became synonymous with relentless pursuit, but make no mistake, he was no one trick pony. Mac's side of the field was a no go zone for running backs due to his ability to quickly diagnose the play and get off run blocks. Thus, running in his direction was an act in futility. Then came the seismic trade in 2018. The Raiders head coach and de facto general manager John Gruden sent Mack to the Chicago Bears in a surprise trade that shocked the NFL and the Raider fan base. In exchange, the Raiders received two first round draft picks, a third and a sixth over a two year span. Of those picks, only Josh Jacobs panned out as a pro bowler and his return turn is now in question as he will be a free agent this year. Mack was later traded by the Bears to the Chargers where he continued to dominate including against the Raiders. With over 440 tackles, 101 sacks, 7 Pro Bowls and Defensive Player of the Year to his name, Khalil Mack will go down in history as one of the best hybrid defensive ends in history. Fast forward to 2024, the Raiders have a new head coach, Antonio Pierce, who is a former Pro Bowl linebacker intent on building the most dominant defense in the NFL, and former Chargers GM Tom Telesco. Telesco, now with the Raiders, has the Raider Nation buzzing. Could he orchestrate a reunion with Khalil Mack? A former Raiders linebacker, Kurt Morrison, seems to think so. He tweeted, Tom Telesco's first move, bringing Phillip Rivers out of retirement to the Raiders, or Khalil Mack back to the silver and black. Phillip Rivers coming out of retirement is a pipe dream, but the return of the Mack is a real possibility. But let's crunch numbers. Max cap hit with the Bears is a hefty $38.5 million. The Chargers grappling with salary cap constraints might release him to save $23 million. If he hits the free agency, the Raiders should seriously consider a reunion. After all, Mack finished the 2023 season with a jaw-dropping 17 sacks, proof that he's still a dominant force. But at 33 years old, the question is how dominant will he be in 2024? Plus the Raiders' Malcolm Kuntz had a breakout year in 2023 with a current starter opposite of Max Crosby. To put Kuntz back on the bench again in favor of Khalil Mack would only set back his progression. Plus, Kuntz is on a much cheaper rookie scale contract that frees up the Raiders to address pressing needs in the free agency, like defensive tackle and O-line. The return of the Mac paired with Max Crosby certainly has Raider Nation salivating and quarterbacks running scared. Imagine what would have been if Mac had not been traded. Pairing Mac attack with Mad Max Crosby at their prime could have drastically changed the Raiders' abysmal defenses over the past seven years. There is no doubt bringing Mac to the silver and black would make the defense even better. But at what cost? Would Mac take a team friendly deal to make a Super Bowl run? Would Kuntz suffer and lose out on his progression? Let me know, Raider Nation. Should the Raiders pursue the return of the Mac? Sound off down in those comments below, and don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Max Crosby.
copy of the Las Vegas Raiders is one of the most dominant defensive ends in NFL history today. Drafted by the Raiders in the fourth round back in 2019 out of Eastern Michigan University, he was not a highly touted prospect. He quickly proved his worth as a rookie, recording 10 sacks, 47 tackles, and four forced fumbles. He earned a spot on the all-rookie team and was runner-up for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Crosby continued to impress in his second season despite playing through a broken hand and a torn labrum. He finished with seven sacks, 39 tackles, and 13 quarterback hits. He also became a vocal leader and a fan favorite for the Raider Nation, who moved to Las Vegas in 2020. In 2021, Max Crosby had a breakout year earning his first Pro Bowl selection and a second team All-Pro nod. He racked up eight sacks, 56 tackles, and a league leading 30 quarterback hits. He also had seven pass deflections, showing off his versatility and athleticism. Crosby followed up his stellar 2021 campaign with an even better one in 2022, making his second Pro Bowl and earning a first-team All-Pro honor. He led the Raiders with 12 and a half sacks and also 89 tackles, 22 tackles for loss, 36 quarterback hits, and three forced fumbles. He was a force of nature on the field, terrorizing opposing quarterbacks and running backs alike with his speed, power, and unstoppable motor. Crosby's 2023 season was no different as he made his third consecutive Pro Bowl and second team All-Pro. He had 14 and a half sacks, 90 tackles, 23 for a loss, 31 quarterback hits, and two forced fumbles. He also had two pass deflections showing off his wingspan and earning him the nickname Condor. In his five seasons in the league, Crosby has amassed 52 sacks, 321 tackles, 88 tackles for loss, and 120 four quarterback hits, nine forced fumbles. He ranks sixth amongst active players in sacks and first among players drafted in 2019 or later. He is widely regarded as one of the best defensive players in the NFL and a cornerstone of the Raiders franchise. Crosby's career highlights include some of the most memorable plays in Raiders history, such as his multiple sacks of Patrick Mahomes or his four sack performance against the Bengals in 2019, the first rookie to do so since 2009. Crosby is only 26 years old and has a bright future ahead of him. He is under contract with the Raiders until 2026, and he has expressed his desire to stay with the team for his entire career. He has already established himself as one of the best defensive ends in the league, and he has the potential to become one of the best of all time. Unfortunately for the Condor, he has been flying solo for most of his professional career. Though the Raiders had high hopes of bringing in aging vet and former Pro Bowler Chandler Jones, Raider Nation would soon be disappointed in his lack of production and subsequent mental breakdown that all but ended his career. Thus, the Condor would be forced to go it alone once again, or at least until Malcolm Kuntz got his shot. Kuntz, who was drafted in the third round in 2021, had a breakout year in 2023, opposite of Max Crosby on the Raiders' defensive line. He set a career high in nearly every defensive category, including eight sacks, nine tackles for loss, and three forced fumbles. He also started a career high 11 games and 17 appearances. Kuntz's emergence as a pass-rushing threat was a key factor in the Raiders' improved defense which ranked 10th in the league in points allowed and 12th in yards allowed. Kuntz's eight sacks were second to the team behind Crosby's 14 and a half, and he also added 36 pressures in the final nine games of the season after Antonio Pierce took over as interim head coach. Kuntz's performance earned him praise from his coaches and teammates, as well as recognition from the media. He was named an unsung hero of 2023 season by around the NFL writer Kevin Patra, who wrote that Kuntz blasted off in the second half of the season and proved his impressive run was not a blip on the radar. So what makes Kuntz such a force on the edge? Well, Kuntz has a combination of speed, power, agility that makes him hard to block. He can beat tackles with his quick first step, his explosive burst, and his ability to bend the corner reminiscent of one Khalil Mack, who was another Raider great. He can also use his hands to swipe away blockers or bull rush them with his strength. 
He has a high motor and relentless pursuit of the quarterback, and he doesn't give up on plays. He also has a knack for stripping the ball and creating turnovers, as shown with his three forced fumbles. Kuntz is not only a pass rusher though, he can also hold his own against the run, setting the edge and making tackles. He has a good awareness and instincts and he can diagnose plays and react accordingly. He also is a team player, works well with his fellow linemen and linebackers, and who plays with a passion and energy. Kuntz is still young and has room to grow and improve. He can work on his consistency and his repertoire of moves. He can also learn from his veteran teammates, like Max, who has been mentoring him and helping him to develop. But there is no doubt that Kuntz is a rising star on the Raiders defense and a player to watch out for in the 2024 season. He has the potential to become one of the best edge rushers in the league and be a part of a devastating one-two punch between him and Crosby, the Batman and Robin of defensive ends. Success can be a lonely road. It can be a tough road. It can be a hard road. It's not for everyone. Those who follow others like sheep will never know who they truly are. Only those who follow their own path can discover their true potential. Those who fly alone have the strongest wings. Those who walk alone have the strongest direction. The rest will always be in need of others for their survival. They will always need attention, need recognition to survive. I am at peace alone, needing no attention, no recognition, and still I thrive. I'm not saying those who have support are weak. I'm not saying you must go at it alone to gain strength. This is just for those who have fought battles alone. Those who have felt like they don't fit in. Those who have never had support in anything they do. All of those who feel no one believes in them. You don't need them to believe in you if you believe in you. You don't need their support if you've got your own back. The best part is when you truly live the life you want to live, when you speak your truth, when you embrace who you are, then you gain real respect and real love. People love those who have the guts to be themselves, those who have the courage to follow their heart. Why? It's rare. Why? Because most people wish they could do the same. Show them the way. Keep going. Believe in yourself. It will all come good in the end. And when it does, you won't have only inspired yourself to be more. You will have inspired so many others. I had to learn to fight alone. And because of that, I am strong alone. I am strong. Full stop. I developed inner strength that can't be broken. I am unbreakable. Because of the pain, I am strong. Because of the struggle, I have character most will never know. I appreciate others more than ever. I have more compassion than ever. I had to go deep into the darkness. Now I have more depth. Now I can see clearer. I had to face huge internal challenges. Now I can defeat any challenge. I will destroy every challenge. I am proud of who I have become. I am proud I have overcome. I am proud I kept going. I am proud of who I am, who I have become. I am proud I stayed true to myself because now I can live as myself with respect from others and most importantly, pride and respect from myself. Thanks, Raiders B, for the poster.
We have a very deceptive stat for 2023 that had us like a top 10 offensive line. The deceptive part of that is yes, because of two factors. One, we were in maximum protection, like I think most in the NFL last year, which means that Michael Mayer was staying in to block, acting like a, a sixth lineman. We had on every passing down, we had our running backs staying in to block all out or at least do a chip block before they would go out on their routes. Good offensive lines don't do that. They don't have to do that. Their front five can handle business and ours, especially on the left side of the field, were not able to handle business very well. This is why Jermaine Illuminor is no longer with the team, why we did not offer him a contract because he really struggle a lot of pe people were saying oh he improved so much yeah because he had michael mayer double teaming guys with him but remember aiden o'connell when he got sacked seven times by khalil mack who was blocking him jermaine illuminor partly it was aoc's fault as well for holding on the ball too long but still for one guy to give up seven sacks that's way too much and that's why he's not with the team anymore so we definitely had to address that and we did we addressed it in the draft and we are still addressing it as news is coming out that we just picked up yet another uh, tackle. He's swing, he can play tackle, he can play guard, but he's actually better uh, suited for playing tackle. So we're gonna jump into this, got another upgrade with. We're gaining depth on that offensive line, which is something we didn't really have much of last year so it's good to see that tom telesco is hitting that free agency with the undrafted guys as well as veterans the las vegas raiders were aggressive in trying to upgrade their offensive line in the draft having used two of their first three picks on offensive linemen however that's not stopping them from beefing up their depth according to may 6 x post from the nfl networks ian rapaport the Raiders are signing former New Orleans Saints offensive lineman Andros Pete. He has a stretch of where he was one of the top offensive linemen in the NFL in 2018 to 2020, where he was named to the Pro Bowl for three straight years. He hasn't been able to maintain that level of play consistently, which has led the Saints to playing him at multiple positions along the offensive line. He's primarily played guard throughout his career, but has played some left and right tackle. At six foot seven, his body is actually better equipped to play tackle. That may be where the Raiders plan to use him. Dylan Parham is likely the starting left guard while second round pick Jackson Powers Johnson will likely start at the right side. Now, if you've seen any of my discussions with Hot Beavers from Raider Nation Hotspot when he comes on my show, he's of the opinion that Parham's going to probably switch back to right guard, which is his natural position, and see uh, Jackson Powers Johnson start at left guard because Jackson Powers Johnson also played center and guard, and he played left and right guard. Mostly right guard, but he can also play that left side. So this may be a little bit you know, up in the air as to which side Dylan Parham's going to play. Again, he plays better on the right side, but we'll we'll have to see what the coaches decide on that. Uh, but at worst, Pete gives the Raiders experienced offensive lineman who has started in over 102 games in his career. His versatility should be a welcome addition to Las Vegas. Even if Pete doesn't start in 2024, he should see the field plenty, you know, as a rotational player. It remains to be seen how the Raiders plan to use Pete this season. If they want him to play tackle, looks like the team will have a three-way competition between Thayer Munford, rookie third-round pick Delmar Gaze, and Pete. Mumford is the likely favorite to earn the nod. He's started in 14 games for the Raiders across the last two seasons and should only improve in his third year. The team seems to like Mumford and the right tackle job is his to lose. However, the Raiders used a third round pick on Glaze for a reason. Now, we can argue whether or not DJ Glaze should have been drafted at, at in the third round or maybe he was more of a fourth round guy. I think he has the physical upside to be a third round guy and now he's just got to put it all together now that he's in the NFL. And if he gets the right coaching, I think he has the potential to be a starter in the NFL for sure. He certainly has the physicality to do so. He's a bit raw and could make more sense as a swing tackle for a year or two, but if he's ahead of schedule, the Raiders will consider giving him a starting nod. 
Pete makes the most sense as a backup who can fill in multiple spots if there are injuries. The team didn't have consistency at right tackle last season and has to hope they can find a more permanent solution this season. Now moving on to Jackson Powers Johnson. Well, before we do that, we got to put the kids to bed. You know how we do. Got to thank today's sponsor of the channel, and that is Earth Elixir, owned and operated by a Raiders fan. And it is my favorite company because they offer the Tongat Ali and Fidosia Agrestis, which has been proven clinically to raise your testosterone without the need of TRT. The link itself will save you an additional 15% just for the Raider D family. Is willing to play wherever. Perhaps the best pick the Raiders made in 2024 NFL Draft was landing Powers Johnson in the second round. I agree this dude is a first round talent. The fact that we got him all the way at pick 44 was a fantastic pickup for our offensive line moving forward into the future. He could have easily been a first round pick and though he played center in college, but he also played guard too. And a lot of people don't know his first year, he even had to play some defensive tackle because they were very thin over there. Uh, so that's kind of where his aggressive mean streak comes from, in my opinion. The team is likely to use him at guard. He doesn't mind. He said it's clear that he'll play wherever the team needs him to. Anywhere the Raiders want me to play, Play, I'm going to play. If they want me to throw the ball, I'll throw the ball. I'm pretty sure we won't have him throwing the ball, by the way. Powers Johnson said during an April 26 conference call, but I really think me playing center is seamless and is a testament to all coaches I had at Oregon and in high school. I've worked so hard, but it's not really about me. It's about all the people who helped me get here. High character, dude. I love that. The dream has been fulfilled, but now there's new dreams to go and get. Jackson Powers Johnson likes to play like a psycho. He likes to get crazy and he loves being a Raider now because in his own words, the Raider Nation is just as crazy as he is. Like I like I like to play like a psycho on the field and to have fans all around you that are just as psycho as you. That is for me to get my gear. Move it on in here, because I'm going to bunk with you, buddy. We're going to be buddies. We're going to be pals. We're going to wrestle around. <laughs> Old Matt's going to be your shadow. Here's you. Here's Matt. There's you. There. I love it. I love it. Bring it. Fit right in. I love to see this enthusiasm i love to see young players buying into the team's culture and motto right from the beginning and if you like what jpj had to say well check out what coach antonio pierce had to say about christian wilkins play a little basketball a little team bonding you know who the best player was christian wilkins <laughs> not even close we're all sitting there like what in the world is this? 300 pound man dunking, bending, doing all this stuff that he's able to do. But more importantly, the love, the leadership, the passion, the desire to win. We got to bring in winners. We got to bring in guys that want to win, that's going to strain. There's two gentlemen that's in this building every day before coaches, Max Crosby, Christian Wilkins. They happen to be on the same D-line playing next to each other. God bless everybody else. Don't worry about our quarterbacks, buddy. Worry about yours. Arguably one of the greatest NFL defensive ends, Chandler Jones suddenly apologized for being on a bizarre run of strange and wild social media behavior and posts. The apology took a large section of his followers aback. Jones' salient and collected apology posted on X Wednesday afternoon was self-aware of the damage that he's caused to his image. Jones posted on X, over the past few months, I've been dealing with some personal matters, but I'm happy to share that I'm feeling much better now. I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to my family, friends, and fans for all of your unwavering love and support. Additionally, I want to offer a sincere apology to anyone I may have unfortunately offended. Your understanding and support mean the world to me. It was an encouragement 
encouraging update to anyone following Jones's saga over the past five months. Jones initially started showing strange signs of a mental breakdown during the 2023 season, leading to the Las Vegas Raiders having to dump him from the team. Jones's erratic posts, including an inadvertent flashing of the camera and frequent manic episodes, spawned plenty of concern around the ex-pro bowler's mental health. The Raiders sent people to check on Jones, but he simply ignored all of their efforts. Jones was arrested twice in a month following his release from the Las Vegas Raiders for violating a domestic violence temporary protection order. He missed the entire 2023 NFL season for the Raiders. There is no doubt that Chandler Jones is one of the best defensive ends to ever play the game. He is an amazing talent, but at 33 years old, with all of the mental troubles that he has suffered, including arrests, it would be a far-fetched idea for any team to take Jones back. But this apparent sudden apology appears to be a PR move to possibly get Jones back into the league. Stranger things have certainly happened, and other players with mental problems as well as injuries and arrests have been successful in returning to the NFL. It remains to be seen if this is just a ploy to get back in the NFL or if Jones is simply trying to get his life back together. As far as the Raider Nation is concerned and all football lovers around the world, we wish the best for Chandler Jones in hopes that he can get whatever help he may need. Let me know down in the comments, Raider Nation. Should we give Chandler Jones a second chance? of NFL lore amidst a thunderous clash of titans on the gridiron, there exists a name that resonates with the echoes of greatness. A name that etched itself into the tapestry of football history with indomitable spirit and unwavering skill. That name is Charles Woodson. Born into the crucible of competition on October 7, 1976, in the city of Fremont, Ohio, Woodson's destiny was forged in the fires of athletic prowess. A prodigious talent from his earliest days, he cast his shadow across high school fields dominating football basketball and track with a ferocity that is unmatched to this day. Ohio Mr. Football and USA Today All-American in 1994, he was destined for greatness from the start. But it was at the hallowed halls of the University of Michigan where Woodson's legend truly took flight. A force of nature on the field, he amassed accolades that glittered like the stars above. The Heisman Trophy, the Walter Camp Award, and the Bronco Nagurski Trophy. These were just but a few jewels adorning his crown of glory, leading Michigan to a national championship in 1997. Woodson carved his name in the annals of college football history as the only defensive player to claim the coveted Heisman Trophy. With the dawn of his NFL journey beckoning, Woodson's path led him to the Oakland Raiders where he unleashed a storm of talent upon the league. Drafted in the fourth overall pick in the 1998 NFL Draft, he made an immediate impact, earning the NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year award with his very first Pro Bowl selection. From 1998 to 2005, he was a four-time Pro Bowler and two-time All-Pro, helping the Raiders reach the Super Bowl in 2002. Yet the call of destiny whispered in his ear, leading him to the frozen tundra of Green Bay. In 2006, Woodson joined the Green Bay Packers, igniting a career resurgence that would etch his name in NFL lore. Over seven seasons with the Packers, he earned five Pro Bowl nods and four All-Pro selections. His crowning achievement came in 2009 when he won the NFL Defensive Player of the Year award, leading the league with nine interceptions and three touchdowns. In 2010, Woodson reached the pinnacle of NFL success, hoisting the Lombardi Trophy with the Packers after defeating the Pittsburgh Steelers in Super Bowl 45. However, his postseason heroics would come to a devastating end as he would break his collarbone halfway through the game while attempting to intercept Ben Roethlisberger. But like any young man who ventures the world to find greener pastures, his heart kept calling him home, and so he returned to the Raiders in 2013, 
defying the ravages of time and age, continuing to play at a high level until his retirement after the 2015 season. At age 39, he earned his ninth and final Pro Bowl selection, a testament to his enduring greatness. Retiring as a gridiron legend with 818 tackles, 20 sacks, 28 forced fumbles, and 65 interceptions, Woodson's legacy will be nearly impossible to match. An icon of tenacity and talent, a titan among men, with a heart as vast as the gridiron itself, he continues to inspire as a philanthropist, entrepreneur, and sage of the game, lending his wisdom to the next generation of gridiron warriors as an ESPN analyst and Raider Nation alumni, who is often seen in the Raiders locker room hanging with the new players. As we gazed at the storied career of Charles Woodson, let us not merely see a man but a legend, a colossus, whose indelible mark on the game shall echo through the ages as a testament to the enduring power of human spirit. So we all know by now that Devontae Adams has been traded to the New York Jets for a third round pick, which is conditional if he is named first or second team all pro, or if the Jets can somehow manage to make the AFC championship, the Raiders will acquire a second round draft pick. Now let's assume that that's going to happen. I think it's more likely that he will be named first or second team all pro than the Jets making it to an AFC championship, seeing how they have the same record as the Las Vegas Raiders, and they have some serious issues, including firing their head coach and losing games. That being said, remember that right here on the Raider D podcast, we were the first to announce that the deal was done between the Jets and the Raiders for Devontae Adams and this trade an hour before even Adam Schefter or Ian Rappaport reported it out there on their Instagram and X profiles. How did we do that? Well, because we have some insider information in the front office of the Las Vegas Raiders, which is able to get us this intel even before the big dogs like Ian and Adam. That being said, we also were the first to announce to you, the Raider Nation, that Malcolm Koontz, unfortunately, would be out for the entire season. It was only a day later that Adam Schefter put it out on his X count, and then all of the talking heads began to speak about it. If you like insider information when it comes to the Las Vegas Raiders, and we definitely don't claim to be the biggest insider podcast out there, but we do have some intel from the Raiders, then make sure that you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so that you are the first to know. Now let's move on with the fact that the Raiders have this deal done and we could end up with a second round draft pick. Remember yesterday, I was also the first to tell you guys before the deal was done with Tom Brady to become a part owner of the Raiders and Mark Davis made a statement in regards to quarterbacks that the scouting department of the Las Vegas Raiders were instructed from the top, i.e. meaning Mark Davis, to scout heavily Shador Sanders. He is enamored with Shador and he has a plan to bring Shador to the Raiders in 2025. But the plot thickens because he also is enamored with Deion Sanders. And there has been some rumors within the Raiders organization, which has been brought to our attention, that if Antonio Pierce cannot win at least eight games this season, he will be out the door and the Raiders will be bringing in Deion Sanders as head coach and the Raiders will do everything they can to draft his son. I personally don't like this plan. Anytime you put a head coach and a starting quarterback in the same team in the NFL where it is very business oriented, that could lead to disaster or it could lead to Super Bowls. We'll see how it all pans out. But right after I had posted that a couple hours later, the information came out about Tom Brady becoming part owner and Mark Davis made this statement right here. What role do you expect Tom Brady to play in your organization? Well, but it's just exciting. Um, what I was going to say is uh, we uh, traded Devontae Adams for uh, Tom Brady. <laughs> third round pick today. <laughs> and although Tom can't play, I think he can help us select a quarterback in the future and potentially train him as well. So as you can see, it appears as though our intel was correct and the Raiders are absolutely looking to replace our quarterback situation, both Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew in the draft in 2025. Now, that being said, let's take a quick look at Shador Sanders and another guy that I believe that the Raider Nation should actually draft rather than Shador. 
But let's start out with Shador Sanders. Who is he? Well, we know that he's the son of Deion Sanders, who was a legendary cornerback for both the San Francisco 49ers as well as the Dallas Cowboys. Deion Sanders is, he's showtime. He's big time, big personality, all that in, in package. But he backed it up with his words. And his son has been doing the same thing as a quarterback. Completely different situation. You would have thought that he would have been a safety or a corner, but actually he has excelled at the quarterback situation. He started out his career at Jackson State, where he played and uh, racked up 3,732 yards, 40 touchdowns, and six interceptions. In 2023, he transferred over to Colorado. His first game, he recorded a record of 510 yards, four touchdowns against poor TCU, who just got battered. In 2024, he is really becoming the front runner in order to win the Heisman, as well as be the number one overall draft pick in 2025. And he's done that with 2,018 yards so far, 17 touchdowns to only four interceptions with an amazing 72.6% completion rating, which is really, really good. What Shador is known for is being super accurate with his passes. He can throw every pass out there on the field. He has a strong arm, great pocket awareness, as well as escapability, but he's not really a running quarterback. He is more of a traditional pocket passer who can get out and scramble whenever it is necessary. And yes, he is definitely faster than Aiden O'Connell. But here's the thing. He lost a game last week, which really hurt his stock. However, you have to take a look at why Colorado lost to K-State just, just past Saturday when, in a devastating loss of 31-28. to 28. Was it on Shador Sanders? Well, partly, but mostly not. And I say partly because he did throw an interception. However, he did throw for 388 yards and three touchdowns. He had them in contention to win this game. Unfortunately, Colorado has no semblance of a defense or even an offensive line for that matter. And so they were not able to stop K-State from going down and winning the game and in the fourth quarter. So Shador Sanders is definitely a top prospect and apparently is top prospect for Mark Davis and the Las Vegas Raiders. And there's a very high likelihood that the Raiders will combine two second round draft picks as well as their first draft pick if, ne if necessary to go and get their guy, Shador Sanders. But let's take a look at somebody that I believe that the Raiders should actually draft instead of Shador. While Shador is a premier quarterback in college right now, and by no means bringing him to the Raiders would be a massive upgrade to over Aiden O'Connell, who I still believe in could be a good quarterback in the NFL. But if I have to choose between Shador Sanders and Aiden O'Connell's upside, it's definitely going to be Shador. But let's take a look at another young kid who has a little bit more experience in college football and is an absolute playmaker. And yes, I am talking about Cam Ward over in Miami, but he didn't start out in Miami. Cam Ward actually started out at a very small little college called uh, the University of the Incarnate Word. Uh, never heard of this university before I started researching Cam Ward, but apparently he was pretty darn good over there, racking up 4,648 yards, 47 touchdowns, 10 interceptions with a 65% completion rating. And that was between 20, uh, 2020 and 2021. But in 2022, he transferred over to Washington State and played there for two years where he racked up 6,963 yards, 48 touchdowns, and 16 interceptions with another 65% completion rating over those two years. Amazing stats for this young man. In 2024 in Miami, they are undefeated. He is the front runner right now for the Heisman Trophy Award. He's racked up 2,219 yards, 20 touchdowns, five interceptions with a 69.2% completion rating. He has been in college for five years, so he has a lot of experience. And a lot of people get a knock on Cam Ward that he is a, another running quarterback. He's another Justin Fields. Absolutely could not be further from the truth. In five years of college football, he's only ran for 426 yards. That's less than 100 yards per year. And he's racked up 19 touchdowns on the ground. That being said, who is Cam Ward and why should the Raiders take a look at him? Yes, stats are great. 
But this is why I think he has an edge over Shador and why the Raiders should get him is because he is an absolute playmaker. The dude has like a sixth sense, like a spidey sense, like Spider-Man of the pocket and pocket awareness. And he is able to escape at will. Remind us of anybody wears a jersey in red in a team that we all hate? Yeah, he's able to do that. And while he is supremely athletic, much, much faster than Aiden O'Connell or even Gardner Minshew and can break off 40-yard touchdown runs, that's not his preferred method to score. He is a pass-first quarterback, and much like the guy in red that we all hate, he only uses his legs and escapability not to go pick up first downs with his feet, but with his hands, with his arm to get the ball downfield. His eyes are always downfield. He's never looking back at the rushers. He's never looking at his offensive linemen. And he's definitely never turning backwards like Gardner Minshew did a couple of weeks ago and getting sacked. Instead, he escapes out of the pocket and he is able to throw the ball from Any angle his body can be contorted in, it does not matter. This dude has a rocket for an arm. In fact, he has a crazy stat. He has zero short throws on this season. Not one has he shown, has he thrown short of his receiver. Now he has a few overthrows because he does have an absolute rocket of an arm, but we're not going to have to worry about him escaping the pocket and throwing the ball five yards short of Trey Tucker like Aiden O'Connell has been prone to do. And Because all the emphasis is going to be on Shador Sanders. He's the big name. He's the one that everybody wants. That's going to mean that Cam Ward will probably be the second overall quarterback drafted, which means the Raiders may not even have to trade up to get him if we have a high enough draft pick. And if we do have to trade up to get him, we may not have to give up both of our second round draft picks. The dude's an absolute playmaker. I think long-term he's, Kind of like uh, Cam Newton uh, with a better arm talent, right? He can do everything you need. He has an amazing sidearm pass. I think Cam Ward should be the guy that the Raiders go out and get. If you like Cam Ward, if you like Shador Sanders or any other quarterback out there, drop a comment down below and let us know who your favorite college quarterback is and who the Raiders should be targeting in 2025.